What's happening to it? Zavala, we're back and ready to go. Hello everyone, 3D Hero here, and today I'd like to announce my very new and very first fashion series in Destiny 2 called Destiny Loadouts, a series focused on the latest fashion that I and the community bring up and showcase, with usage in either PvP or PvE. So for my very first Destiny 2 fashion, I've went with a very popular design that I've seen be brought up multiple times by players who have loved the Halo series from old to new. Today I introduce you to ODST Titan, a slim and striking Titan taking on the famous design of the hardcore dropshot troopers of Halo. This design took me quite a while to gather all the necessary parts in game, since there isn't a 100% chance of getting all the parts dropped in a day. If you were lucky, you could probably get everything through a few runs within one day. But if you are unlucky like me in terms of getting the gauntlets that were generally near impossible at times, then it will take you a good few days to gather everything, including the main weapon which would be the Antiope D. But like I said, if you have really terrible luck, then you can always get an alternative that is available on Nessus. So, for the fashion loadout, I went with the following. Your helmet is the Exodus Down helmet, the Gauntlets Lost Pacific Gloves, your chest Retrograde TG2 or Wildwood Chest for that tactical look, and your legs is the Exotic Peacekeepers. I tried to stick with a very tactical and ODST look as best as possible for my Titan, and I found that mix matching these sets here worked out completely amazing. In terms of design, visuals and say 10 out of 10 for fashion. Your primary can be either the Sondok C or the Antiope D. Now like I said, the Antiope D has a very low drop rate. So if you're like most people like me and you can never get the Antiope D to drop by Banshee, then don't worry, there's a mission on Nessus where if you complete it, you'll be awarded the Sondok C SMG. That is literally the same weapon as the Antiope D. So literally, if you can't get the Antiope D, Get, get the Sondok C because literally there's no difference whatsoever except for it just being the blue weapon. Your secondary now is the Gillard 42 and your heavy is the Retro Futurist shotgun. You can mix and match your loadout if you don't agree with what I got as I tried to stick with a iconic look that many OGST soldiers were noticed to always carry around like an SMG, a pistol, an AR and a shotgun or a rocket launcher. So for example your primary doesn't have to be an SMG it could be a fast firing AR like the Scave Lock for example. And then your secondary could be a pistol or it could be an SMG. And then your heavy, a shotgun, a sniper or even rocket launcher. Just go wherever you feel fits the Halo theme. Also make sure your shader is the Metro Shift for the dark camo look or either go with the all green shader for the military look. Or better off, if you spot Dead or Whip back in the Faction Valley event, then go with their shader which will work out completely fine in terms of giving off that ODST look. Now compared to many other people's loadout and design, not many people have talked about the role it will play out in content. Like yes, it looks good and you'll be the talk of the town, but can I survive a firefight in it? Can it support other players through PvE and PvP, to example? I know it's fashion and all, but it's also nice to give it a role in content as well. So I've created my ODST to focus on close quarter engagements and survivability while on the zone. Your whole armor set will give you a decent amount of recovery and resistance, allowing you to survive many fights for both PvP and PvE with you coming out with at least a silver health left for many of your engagements, if you play it smart and you play it safe. Now the only downside to this loadout is the mobility, which is maybe slow for an ODST soldier considering that they're always on the move. However, this shouldn't affect you too much, as you still have enough mobility to skip some fights and meet back up with your squads. Your main primary is designed for shutting down players very quickly in close to medium fights, with its hard hitting and flexibility base. That, with the Peacekeeper Leggings, which allow you to ready your weapon very fast and reload your weapon every time you switch out, meaning you can keep the pressure up on players, and never have your back against the wall in dire situations. Your secondary is designed to be a bullet hose, and ideal for switching out when your main primary can keep up. Its high rate of fire and large magazine count means you can take down a bunch of players or enemies with swift justice. And then, you can switch back to your primary, to which you can wait for those to chase you down, and use it to finish them off. I honestly recommend that if you're going to go with the loadout that I've chosen for the secondary, make sure you use your secondary in close quarter combat, in close to medium, since the weapon fires fast, but it has very high recoil. I would say don't challenge too much when using your primary, as yes, it can take on a bunch of players and enemies as, as like, 
but if you push too aggressively, then it can result in your death very quickly. Play it smart and play it safe. Always watch your radar and only engage if you know you have the drop on them. Don't engage if you know the enemy has a drop on you or they have backup. Because 9 times out of 10, you will get team shotted. And then lastly, for your heavy, your shotgun is a hard hitting but fast running shotty that I found a lot of success to use in PvP. As long as they're close, you can mop up a whole team with ease with it. And I can only say that the Vecho Future shotgun is one of the most underrated shotguns in game. Seeing that most people use other shotguns that are a bit more faster, like Hawthorne's shotgun. But this shotgun here, it's, it's literally the same. It's really good, it's very balanced, it's, it's very fast firing, and it's a great weapon to use in both PvP and PvE. You can really lash your own using this weapon. I want this loadout to feel exactly like an ODST fighter. Hard to kill, cunning, and capable of surviving fights on their own while they wait for backup. And although you won't survive all your fights, you know that you put up a good fight in the end, something that will go a long way for your team. So, why not try this very fashionable loadout out in PvP, and PvP as well, and show the world who the true underdog is. So that is the end of my video, I do hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully, with this type of loadout videos, I hope to bring these out on a regular basis around every week or so. I usually do these stuff for Time for 2, and that's been a major hit with many people, so I'm hoping that with that focus from Titanfall 2 being brought over to Destiny 2, hopefully I can bring in more new players to actually try out something new in the meantime. Because at the current moment we know that Endgame isn't that great, I kind of want to bring in something new for everyone else. I've seen a lot of designs, I've seen a lot of fancy and, and very well presented Destiny players in terms of really making their character look absolutely amazing and, and actually different for once, not something that they just tack on a bunch of armor and stuff to just go ahead and do endgame content. I've seen some really well done and well presented characters. So I thought, why not bring some of my ideas over and use some of the ideas from the community as well and create something unique around it, either it being a PvE content or PvP content. So this is my very first one and like I said, hopefully this won't be my very last one. Hopefully I can carry on and make a whole brand spanking new series based around this design. So lastly guys, if you have any type of design or any type of fashion that you want me to do or any type of fashion that you have with a type of wall built into it, tell me, honestly tell me and I'll get straight to it and I'll see what I can work from there. So like always, thank you all for watching. If you enjoy the content, leave a like, a comment and subscribe for more. If you didn't, by all means leave a dislike. I'll understand and I'll look back over the video to see what I need to prove on in the near future. So once again guys, thank you all for watching and I do hope to see you all again soon.